Today we're making big bucket molds. All right guys, welcome to Outpost Pottery. My name's MJ. Today we are gonna make big bucket molds. Now what is a bucket mold you might ask? A bucket mold is a mold we make out of a bucket. Now it needs to be a bucket with a lid, but it can be any size bucket from five gallons all the way down to small gallons all the way down to something as small as a disposable coffee cup you could get at a gas station. Today we're gonna to do a big bucket mold, a five gallon bucket, and what you're gonna need is you're gonna need clay, you're gonna need some plaster, some number one pottery plaster is preferable, you're gonna need a bucket with a lid, and you're gonna need either a bigger vessel or several smaller vessels, or I'm, today I'm gonna to do 12 of these little shot glass vessels. So the first step is you're going to take your lid to your bucket and we're going to fill this with clay. Now I like to throw out a slab, roll it out real flat, put it inside there and then get it as smooth as I can with my hand and then I like to take it and put it on the wheel and, and kind of throw it even flatter, almost like I'm throwing a plate and get that thing as flat as I can not invading the little channel where the bucket is gonna fit into the lid, but everything up until that point, I'm gonna cover with clay and make it flat. Okay, so that's gonna look like this, and you can even get it flatter if you have like a squeegee. This is for cake decorating, I think. You can get it real flat by just working that off, every all the fingerprints even. Not that the fingerprints are gonna show, but generally you're gonna want this as flat as you can get it. Okay, the next step is you are going to Pick out your vessels. Now, when I'm casting vessels, I, if I care about the vessel, I usually fill it with wax. Why wax? Because I need to put something in here to consume that airspace so it's not a big air bubble. It's going to cause it to float up into the plaster and let the plaster invade the space in there and ruin your mold. You don't want that. So if I don't care about the vessel, if I care about the vessel, I'll fill it with wax and I'll set it down in here, multiples of it. If I don't care about the vessel, I'll either fill it with plaster or I'll fill it with cement. If I'm gonna be casting it a bunch of times, I know I'm never gonna use that vessel. I might go ahead and fill it with cement or with plaster. At any rate, I want it, no air inside that vessel. Okay, let's fill these 12 up with wax. So I got my wax heated up here. So I'm just gonna go down the line. I'm gonna fill it almost up to the top. In fact, I'm gonna fill it to the top. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for maybe 20 or 30 minutes, and then I'm going to position these on the lid where we will be casting them from. Okay, next we're gonna line these shot glasses up such that we can fit 12 of them on this one lid platter. Okay, next I'm just gonna press them in just a little bit, kind of seal that against the clay for each one because I don't want anything coming out. Also to prevent uh, this plate from moving at all and maybe breaking that seal between the lip of the shot glass and the lid, I like to transport it and move it around on these one foot by one foot tiles. And that lets, lets me kind of move things around and you can uh, See the arrangement that I have there. Okay, next we're gonna spray these with uh, mold release. This is a new kind of mold release I'm using. It's called Apple. I'll let you know in the comments, in the description below how well it works. We'll spray the sides of our bucket and then we will mix up some plaster and we will put this on here, seal the lid and pour some plaster. Okay, let's do it.
Here we go. This thing has been setting for about 35 minutes. So it's, it's really hard and uh, you can see here it's really flat and it is hot. So when you mix plaster, it makes this thermo reaction and it gives off a lot of heat. I want to show you here how we're going to take this out and carefully pry this guy off. Some of them are already coming out. Oops, one already came out. That's a good sign. So this is how it worked. Now what I'm going to do is, hope that doesn't fall, I'm going to take this little, any plastic or any non-porous material and just cover that up and kind of seal that. And that will be ready for me the next time I want to use it if it's not too long. But usually I'm making a bunch of these at once. So, um, okay. So now we got to get it out of here. So it's, it's actually not very complicated. We'll just do like this and I'll just kind of give it a little bounce. There we go. Now I'll probably want to just wipe that down before we use it next. Wow, okay. <laughs> Haven't come out this easy in a while, but this is really hot. Okay, so how I'm gonna do this next is I have a tool. A very complex and expensive tool. It's actually just a little piece of plumbing pipe or any pipe that you can find. And this, I'll show you what it does. So what I'm gonna to try to do here, I need to get these out. Now, sometimes I need to kind of trace the edges of these just to make sure there's no overhangs keeping it bound. But it doesn't appear like there is many. Maybe right here there's one. Honestly, usually I have to do a lot more than this. You have to do a little trimming. But here, let's try to get one of these out. I'm going to press this down. Oh, I got a little wax coming out there. Yeah, it's still pretty hot there. Okay, that came right out. <laughs> Sometimes you can pull the, and here, here, this is what this is for. See, that's got wax in there. I'm just going to knock that wax off. And now, oftentimes what will happen is I will press this in. Well, I've never had it happen that hot before. Oops. And when I'm wiggling here, it'll just pop right out. But this is okay. This works just fine too. There's actually a lot of ways to get this out. This can be a little bit messy, so it, it's helpful to have a rag nearby to kind of keep your hands. If you haven't done much with plaster, I would kind of recommend that you don't wear clothes that you want, don't want to get messy or that you're really concerned about getting messy. But see, that's what often happens right there, and it just comes right out. I might try to, yeah. See, I really like this using wax because it's non-destructive to these. This is the, hmm, that's a little, I'll, I'll get a spoon to get that out. That's kind of yucky, just kind of messy. <laughs> Okay, so we have three that came out and what, nine that stayed in. So what I'm gonna do is get a different rag and I am going to one by one wipe these down, get them real clean so it'll be easier to get it out. And I'm just gonna pull it out with my hand. Sometimes I'll actually use rubber gloves to get these out. Because you just want to have something that grips. Can we get some gloves real quick? There we go. Finally. 
Okay, now we got our form. I have a sheer form that I use just for plaster. I don't recommend you mixing your um, plaster shear form with your clay shear forms. But what I like to do is just kind of, while it's still kind of wet, you could wait even a day, but I just want to kind of clean up this edge and give it a little bit of a bevel so it's not going to be chipping off on me. When it's still wet like this, it's super, I mean, it's not soft so that you can't work with it, but it's just, and it's not, it's still, you see how it's kind of clumping off? There's not as much risk to breathing it in at this stage. But I usually wear a mask right now for this. It'd be kind of hard for you to hear me if I did though. <clears throat> now the last thing I'll do is I will go over these edges here with my finger and just kind of almost like sanding it down with my finger, but just kind of giving that a, a little less of an edge so it's less likely to crack off. But that is a strong mold. These are the strongest molds that I make. These big bucket molds, these five gallon bucket molds. Uh, I'll do uniform forms like that, or I will do free forms that I've made on the wheel. And then I'll put a whole uh, you know, sometimes it's the same form, sometimes it's uh, a variety of forms. And if you look on my Amazon page or our store, you'll see all sorts of funky uh, <clears throat> small vessels that we've made that, um, that we can reproduce, you know, hundreds of or thousands if we wanted to. Anyone that wants to put in a thousand, an order of a thousand, you're welcome to. Okay, friends. Now I'm going to let this dry for about three to five days, maybe as many as seven. I'm just going to leave it out, maybe leave it out in the sun if it's not going to rain. Uh, I also have a dehumidifier that sometimes I use in a closed environment, so it just kind of sucks the water out. But honestly, with how hot it is in this Texas sun here, that does better than anything else. So that's all there is to it, guys. These are the exact same molds that I use to make my mini candles, my mini succulent pots, my shot glasses, if you like them, you can head on over to Amazon and pick one up. Don't forget to leave us a good review. If you're interested in learning more about how to make molds or how to do slip casting, check out our course. It's in the links below. And lastly, if you want to jump into our membership site, we have exclusive content, exclusive offers, and even some exclusive services that we only offer to members. Check out that in the links below. I'm MJ Perry. Thanks for watching and keep on learning. Hey.